Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, this lecture is about a couple of problems, very simple problems, uh, related to vector and vector lengths. Um, well, um, I strongly suggest you to try to solve these problems yourself first. They are presented on Unizor.com website. Um, uh, it's a chapter dedicated to vectors, and the particular topic is lengths. I think it's problem number two, right, problem number two. So, two easy problems related to vectors. In this case, these are vectors in three-dimensional space. Uh, the first problem is the following. You have a vector represented as a tuple. Remember what tuple is? It's just three numbers in three-dimensional system which um, are coordinates of the end point of the vector. This is x, this is y, this is z, and this is the vector which has coordinates a, b, c, which means that its projection on three axes are correspondingly projection on the x, it's a, which is the same as this. Projection on the y is b, which is this, which is the same as this. And projection on the z is something like this, right? So this is C, and this is C, obviously. So try to imagine in three-dimensional space. So these two, X and Y, are horizontal plane. Z goes up. Now this is the vector which, coordinate, which has coordinates A, B, and C. And these are projections, basically. Uh, this is projection on the xy uh, plane, and from this point we have projections to x and y. This is projection on the z axis. All right. So a, b, and c are given. What's necessary to find? Okay, number one, lengths, lengths of the vector l, uh, a, 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 b, c. Okay, l, lengths. All right. So how can we find the lengths? Well, let's consider triangle OPQ. Now, PQ is a projection on the XY axis, which means it's perpendicular to all different lines, including OQ. So this is the right angle, 90 degrees. And it's a vertical um, right triangle. So all P is a hypotenuse, PQ is one catheter, and OQ is another catheter. We do know PQ. PQ is projection on the Z axis, right? Because that's the projection um, on the, that, that's the uh, uh, segment which constitutes the distance from the point to projection on the uh, uh, x, y uh, plane, which means that the length of the segment is projection to the z uh, axis. So we know PQ. Now, do we know OQ? Because if we do, we can just use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Well, we don't know OQ easily, but we do know that OQ is a hypotenuse with A and B this is also the right angle, right? Because from the Q, this line is perpendicular to OX. If you imagine this is X, O, uh, Y is a horizontal plane, we just look at this from the angle. But if we look at this from the top, that would be a perpendicular, right? So this is the right triangle. 
OQR. And in this right triangle, we do know OQ because this is the hypotenuse with two catheters A and B. So OQ square equals to A square plus B square. Now OP square, which is the square of the lengths which we are looking, lengths of the vector, is OQ square plus O uh, plus PQ square. which is equal to OQ squared is A squared plus B squared, PQ is C, so we have A squared plus B squared plus C squared. So the length OP L is equal to square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared, which is absolutely similar to the lengths of the vector in two-dimensional space, because if you have only two dimensions, let's say this and this, so forget about the bottom of the picture. Then obviously the length is equal to length squared is equal to sum of these two squares, right? Because these are two projections and these are two coordinates. So for a two-dimensional case, it would be a squared plus b squared. Three-dimensional, a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And actually, uh, if we will go deeper into the higher levels of mathematics, the vectors in n-dimensional space which have coordinates like a1, a2, a2, a3, a, a, a n, they do have the lengths, which is defined, defined now, it's a definition, as a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square, etc. Et okay, so that's the lengths. Now, next, angle with axis x, y, and z. Well, these are, again, spatial angles. Uh, so try to bear with me. It's angle from vector OP, for instance, to vector OZ, or OX, or OY. So it's these, one, two, and three, these angles. And again, try to imagine it in three-dimensional space. This vector OP sticks right in the middle of these three axes. The three axes are perpendicular to, to each other. Well, what do we know about these triangles? Well, look at this this way. If you will connect, uh, what do we have? We have more, let's say, M and N. If you connect P to point R, or P to point M, or P to point N, which we have already connected. Now, it's very easy to um, understand that these are perpendiculars to corresponding axes. So these are basically projections um, uh, from the point P onto the corresponding axis. Q is a projection on the, on the plane X O Y. M is projection of the point P onto the Y, because that's exactly what coordinates actually are, right? It's a projection of the point on the corresponding axis. And, and N is a projection to, uh, to, the Z, uh, to the Z axis. So, what do we know about each of these triangles? Let's say OPR, for instance. Well, we know that this is L is a hypotenuse, and the catheters is A, because PR is perpendicular to OR. It's projection from the P to the axis. Same thing here. What do you know about triangle, let's say, OPM? Again, OP is a hypotenuse, the same hypotenuse, and this is one catheter, PM, and another catheter is B in this case. So, all these triangles, we have three triangles, their properties are their hypotenuse is L, and one of the catheters is corresponding to A, B, or C. Now, we are looking for a, an angle um, which is adjacent to this particular catheter, or an angle adjacent to this particular catheter, or angle adjacent to this particular catheter. 
So let's go to the two-dimensional picture. So if you have a hypotenuse, which is always L, and one of the catheters, which is A, or B, or C, and you need to know angle phi, which is adjacent, how would you calculate the angle phi? Well, assuming that this particular point is uh, uh, has positive coordinates A, B, and C, just for simplicity, um, we can say that these angles are all acute, and uh, cosine of phi is equal to A over L, over L, capital L. So from this, we derive very simply that um, angles, let's call them uh, phi 1, phi 2, and phi 3. So phi 1 is equal to uh, arc cosine of A over L. Phi 2, uh, phi 2 is equal to arc cosine of B over L. And, and, and C over L. So these are angles between the vector and the corresponding axis. And again, we derived it by projecting the endpoint of the vector onto each of the axis, and the projection point has the lengths A, B, and C, and the lengths of the vector we have already calculated, which is this. So just substitute L into this formula, and you will get one angle. And then instead of A, put B, and you will have another angle with the y-axis, and C for z-axis. And the last one about this particular problem is, um, let's consider, I think we have too many different things on this picture. So let's redraw it. Now we need an angle between vector and its projections not onto the axis, but projections to the planes, coordinate planes. So let's just consider one of them. Okay, this is the one. We project the point P to point Q. So this is L, uh, this is A, and this is A, this is B and B, this is the right angle. Now this is projection, so this is also the right angle. <coughs> and we need an angle between OP and OQ. Basically, it's very similar. What do we know about triangle OPQ? We know the hypotenuse OP. Now, this is the right angle, right? We know one coordinate, which is PQ, which is a C coordinate, right? The, the Z axis projection. And then we don't know this particular uh, catheters, but we don't really need it because we have this. Uh, uh, opposite catheters. So the angle can be calculated as uh, sine of phi is equal to c over l, right? If this is phi, the opposite catheters towards hypotenuse. And we know uh, l because we have already calculated it, right? So in this case, well, the only thing is, let's use, instead of phi, let's use psi. Which means psi 1 is equal to arc, cos, arc sine in this case. Sorry about this. Arc sine. Now, in this case, it's C over L. 
and in other cases it's B over L and, and A over L. So the, the, the angle between vector OP and this projection on XY is arc sine C over L, where L is this. Now the angle between the vector and this projection on, let's say, uh, X or Z plane would be the B over L in this case. And projection on Y O Z plane would be arc sine of A over L. Well, that completes this problem. So I think all you need here, the problem is very simple, as long as you understand this spatial uh, relationship, which angles are right angles, which angles are acute angles, etc. And again, it's easier for me to solve this problem with all positive A, B, and C, so my angle lies in the main, uh, op, how is it called, octangle, op, 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 octangle, whatever. Um, the opposite to quadrant, uh, quadrant in, in, in two-dimensional case, we have uh, octant, I guess, octant. So this is the main octant with all positive coordinates in the three-dimensional space. So we have to understand how this projection actually is, is working. I mean, I don't have these three-dimensional models to show you, so that's why I try to, to display it on, on the whiteboard, but, but basically that's what it is. Just imagine everything is happening in three-dimensional space. Next problem. Also easy and also requiring certain uh, dimensionality of your vision. All right, so what do we know? We know about the vector. Well, it's basically kind of opposite problem. In this problem, in the previous problem, we knew um, the tuple representation, A, B, and C. Now, we know something else. We know the length of the vector. We know L. And we know And we know these angles between the vector and its projection on uh, each of the plane. So this is a projection onto x, y. So let's call this angle gamma. Now projection on the uh, on this particular plane. Uh, it should be something like this, I guess. This point. So we know this point, and the vector projection is this, so we know this angle. Now this is xz, so we will call it beta, and then gamma, similarly. So what do we know to find out? Well, first of all, we have to know a, b, and c. Well, let's think about it. Again, it's very simple. What is Z coordinate in this particular case? It's the length of this particular cathedral, because this is at the right angle. It's perpendicular down to the plane, and this is one of the lines from this point. So the projection of OP would be OQ. We know L, we know gamma, so we know this opposite catheters, right? This PQ, which is Z coordinate, right? Which is C in our representation, is equal to, so catheters, if we know hypotenuse and opposite angle, right? So it's L times sine of gamma. And absolutely similarly, you will get that B is equal to L sine of beta, and a, and a is equal to L sine of alpha. That's it. It's very simple. So all you have to understand is how this spatial arrangement is, is, is working. All right, next. 
And what are the lengths of three projections on the planes? OK, so now it's asking, what are these lengths of projections, OQ, for instance? Well, but again, we know everything about this. We know this catheter, and we know this catheter. So the projection OQ is equal to L cosine of gamma, right? This is catheters. This is hypotenuse. This is an angle adjacent. So the cosine of this angle is this over this. So this particular line, uh, this particular segment, catheters, is equal to hypotenuse time times the cosine. And similarly, all other. Uh, the projection, uh, the length of the projection on the, uh, let's say, xz would be uh, L cosine beta and uh, correspondingly L cosine alpha. So, uh, are these problems difficult? No, but let me repeat again. You really have to understand how, how it's all arranged in three-dimensional space. Well, other than that, uh, I do suggest you to um, go back to the notes for this lecture. And again, they are on unisor.com in the vector chapter, a uh, topic called lengths. And just do it yourself. Try to draw your own uh, picture of uh, uh, illustration of these uh, problems and get the same results. I think it's a very useful exercise, and it helps you to visualize how everything is done in three-dimensional space. That's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.